So the video from this morning could have been done a lot better, so let's just go ahead and redo it. This is chapter 9, and quadratic graphs and their properties are what we're going to be talking about. So here's the first thing we're going to look at. Uh, that is the graph of y equals x. That is where x and y are the same value, and whenever, whatever you plug in for x, you get for y. So when you plot it, you get that diagonal line. We have looked at this line before. This is called the parent function for all linear graphs. Most basic thing, y equals x. Over here, we have what we're going to be looking at today, and that is the graph of y equals x squared. So the main difference here is that the x only had an exponent of 1, but the x squared has an exponent of 2. That's the difference. So... The graph of that, when you take an x value of, let's say, negative 2, and you plug it in for x, you would be taking negative 2, and you would be squaring it, because that's what the function says, and you would get positive 4. Likewise, if you plug in other numbers, like negative 1, you plug that in, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 0 times 0 is also 0. 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4. And that's how you get all of those y values. When you plot those y values on the coordinate plane, you get a shape that is called a parabola. And that is the main picture that we're going to be looking at today, a parabola. If you were to be taking notes right now, which I certainly hope you are, uh, that is definitely something to write down and put two stars around it. All right, so before we move into any problems, we have to look at something that we usually always talk about, and that is standard form. What you're looking at right here are three lines drawn on a regular coordinate plane representing the standard form of uh, a linear function. What you're seeing over here on the right is the different types of quadratic functions that you can get. All of these are parabolas, and as you can see, there are many different shapes, and you can even flip them upside down like the one that's in yellow. Basically, y equals mx plus b is the standard form of a linear function and y equals ax squared plus bx plus c is the standard form of a quadratic function. So a big thing to just notice is that we only have a single x value in slope-intercept form, but you have an x value that is being squared, and then you also have an x value that is being raised to the first power. It's the fact that you have two x variables occurring at the same time that make the function kind of this U parabola shape. So let's look at a few examples and get a few concepts basically down. Uh, so this first example is going to be when the values of B and C are both zero. And I will be talking about standard form a lot, referring to the letters A, B, and C. So if you need to jump back to the previous slide just to look at standard form again or write it down, you should definitely do that. Uh, so when b and c are both 0, obviously anything times 0 is 0, so both uh, these values will cancel out. They will go away. You could have, let's say, a 2 as the a value, or a fraction, 1 half, or a decimal. In any case, though, uh, because the value of a is positive, your parabola is going to open upwards. And that's the point. Where this parabola is drawn is not correct. It would not look like this shape. I can't guarantee that for any of these examples. This is just demonstrating the idea that because the value of a is positive, the parabola is opening upward. And that is a major concept that you have to get from just understanding what these quadratic functions look like. Likewise, if a were less than 0, so you have a bunch of negative numbers in front of the x squared, that parabola would open downward. Very logical. So two basic concepts. When a is greater than 0, it opens up. When a is less than 0, it opens down. And a is the coefficient in front of the x squared term. In this example, uh, b and c are both going to be 0 again, but this time a is going to be greater than 1. So that would be like a number, like 4, or it could be a decimal like 1.5, or even a fraction 1 and 1 half. This is going to create a parabola that opens up a more in a, wi in a wider fashion, and it's just going to just open up more than, than the previous picture, which, which kind of looks like, like that. That's kind of what a standard parabola looks like. This one's just going to open up a little more wider. 
And then let's say the value of a is less than 1 but greater than 0, so basically a fraction. So that could be like 1 fourth, 0.4. Uh, that kind of parabola would be more narrow. So again, the original shape is kind of wider like that. But because you have a fraction as the value of a, you get a parabola that's more narrow. So that's a wider one, and this is more narrow. So in this next example, uh, just the value of b is going to be taken out. So there's no middle term. So in standard form, you have the a, b, and c parts. The b part is not there. But the value of c is there. So you'll notice uh, the next thing that would typically would be drawn would be a plus b x term. Oops. A plus b x term. But that's actually not going to be drawn. Instead... It will just be a value like positive 4, and that's representing C in this case. So what's happening right now is we only have an A value and a C value. Uh, likewise, it could be a negative uh, A value as well, but in any case, because of the positive 4, that shifts the parabola up four places. So as you can see, it is now moved up 1, 2, 3, 4 units, and that is because of the positive 4. And then also, because of the negative 3, the uh, red parabola, which is also upside down because that is a negative sign, uh, it has shifted down 1, 2, 3 units because of the negative 3. So basically, when the value of c is not 0, but b is 0, the parabola just shifts up and down. That's it. It doesn't go side to side. That's going to happen if the value of b is not 0. But because it is 0, it's only going to shift up or down. Just some quick vocabulary that you need to be aware of because it will be talked about a lot. The vertex of a parabola is the minimum point or the maximum point. And those are the locations of where they would be. A parabola that opens up has a minimum. And a parabola that opens down will always have a maximum. Also, the axis of symmetry is a big concept. It's basically the imaginary line that cuts the parabola in half. So as you can see, I represented it by this, da this dashed line that's there. Uh, it just cuts the parabola in half. It's a very visual concept. However, sometimes you don't get the graph given to you, and the formula that you would use is right here, negative b over 2a. And we will explore that uh, in the next example. So here's kind of tying everything together. Uh, I'm just going to go through this quickly, and if you need to just kind of look through it again, obviously back things up. Uh, so graph the function, label the vertex, and state the axis of symmetry. So our function is going to be y equals negative 2x squared minus 1. And the first thing that you could do is set up a t-table. I would use those values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. They're very standard. It's a good place to start. When you plug in negative 2 for x squared, Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and then negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. If you follow that same procedure with plugging in the rest of the x values, you can kind of see, whoops, that went way too fast, let's back that up, there we go. Uh, so if you plug in the rest of the x values, like the 2, the negative 1, the 0, you're just plugging them in for the x value that's right there, and you're squaring all of those numbers, multiplying them by 2, and then subtracting 1. So as you plug and chug, you get your y values. Graphing is something we've done a lot of, so I suppose if that is not clear, let me know in class. Also, keep in mind, because all of the y values are negative, I didn't really draw the top part of the coordinate plane. It really wasn't necessary, because all of those are positive y values. So in any case, uh, you get all of your coordinates, you plot them, it's going to come out like this, and the vertex is going to be at 0, negative 1, which is labeled right there. And you can also tell by looking at the graph, there's 0, negative 1. And then 
the axis of symmetry is represented by that red dotted line. Now again, it's a very visual concept, but it's still important to know the other way to calculate the axis of symmetry, and that is using, let's see, uh, that is using the formula negative b over 2a, which is on the other slide. Uh, if you take negative b, in this case there is no b value, there's no x term. If you need to look back at standard form to understand that, you know, just flip back to another slide. Uh, so b is 0, so that means you have negative 0 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, it would be 2 times a, and a is negative 2. So uh, 0 divided by anything is 0, so that's why the axis of symmetry is 0, and that's just the other way to check it. Uh, so that's basically it, guys. Uh, that's 9-1. Do the classwork, ask questions. See you later.